Everybody's trying to steal my lady Spiders in the mirror and things can be right Back to the scene of a Friday night To a blessed collision still frozen time Spill drinkers keep it in the sound of her first time And why did you argue? Dreaming of those eyes The best part of my life And when we make love, babe The world don't make a sound The clock won't turn around Things down when I want to race Catching up again when you travel to chase Feels like we're playing space You always find a way to make up right Even when we're such a fly Even when this is... Good morning my friends, hello I, you know, since I switched to filming on my phone Because um, I want to make content And my brain was like it's gonna be so hard and take so much time to edit this on your film camera, so why don't you just not make content? Anyway, that's the origin story of why I'm filming on my phone. But I'm, the one thing that I really miss is the ability to play with lighting, but also the background blur, so y'all just get to see everything in my kitchen behind me. So, anyway, good morning, it's Monday. I'm gonna start a weekly reading vlog. I am in the middle of, not in the middle, I am into an audiobook right now. I'm just making my morning collagen. I love to have this in the morning. This is my favorite brand. You can get it on Amazon. I like it because it's not like overly sweet. I feel like anytime you get like protein powder or collagen, it can be too sweet. So I'm making the chocolate and I'm gonna put brown sugar syrup in it just because that sounds good. Hopefully it's good. So I am, I just barely finished, well not barely. I took my weekend just to chill and watch TV with my family and uh, watch YouTube videos and stuff like that. And so I finished Flawless and Someone to Love for my last week's reading vlog. So now I am, I have been making my way through uh, A Game of Thrones, the first book in A Song of Ice and Fire. Obviously probably everyone in the world knows that. So I am reading this. I'm like 170 pages into it. I don't really feel like I have anything to say at this point. I feel like that is such a hugely well-known like even if you don't know even if you haven't read the books or watched the show like myself i feel like there are those pop culture moments <laughs> that most people know about you know so i don't really feel like i have anything to say at the moment that's groundbreaking other than i will say i am pleasantly surprised at how readable it is i really was prepared for it to read um <laughs> a little bit like not like Tolkien, but in that same way where it, I've read, you know, I've read all of the book, not all of the books, I've read The Silmarillion, and The Lord of the Rings, and The Hobbit, and with most of those, I feel like they're difficult to get into. He meanders. It reads exactly like you would think a fantasy written by an older man would read. I mean, sorry, but that's how I feel. So I was really pleasantly surprised to see that A Game of Thrones is very readable. I find the characters very interesting. I'm really intrigued with the setup and what's happening. And even though there are so many different points of view, I believe there's like eight, I'm interested in all of them. So that's the book I'm reading right now, but I'm probably not going to talk much about it unless I have like something that I really want to say. So this is me just saying, I don't know what I'm going to pick to read next, but I wanted to say hello and good morning and start up this vlog. So I'm going to take my kid to school and drink my collagen and then start work and I will update you 
when I have more to talk about either a book that I've picked. I kind of want something spooky, but I also kind of want something just like very quick and engaging. So I'm thinking like a contemporary romance for my audiobook. So we will see. We will see. I'll check in with y'all when I have something to say. Hello, friends. Today is Tuesday. It's morning. Everybody's at school. My husband went back to work today. That's a weird light right there. <laughs> My husband went back to work today. I have been working taking care of the dogs. The dogs are sick. They've got some type of digestive something happening. I called the vet yesterday and got them some medicine and some special food. So they, they're doing a lot better today. It's not anything real bad yet, but you know, I don't know if you have dogs, you may have heard about like that new brutal parvo going around. And so I'm like paranoid, like my dogs are vaccinated, but that doesn't seem to matter <laughs> with this new, I don't know if it's a new strain of parvo or what, but anyway, it makes me super anxious and scared and sad to talk about it, but the dogs are doing well. My point is, I don't know that I have one. I'm just taking you along every day and I have switched. Did I tell you? I think I may have told you. I don't know. I'm sorry. I switched my gym time to go in the afternoon and evening with my son because he usually goes, my 14 year old son, he used to go with my husband since my husband was sick. You know, he still wanted to go to the gym. And so I was like, well, we can go together. We'll go at gym. I, <laughs> at night, I usually prefer to go in the morning because, um, I feel better physically at that time, you know, health issues and all that. I feel better physically by the time it's evening. I'm like, I'm not picking up weights at all, but I want to go with my son and, um, welcome to the Tuesday ramblings. <laughs> so my point is, what's my point? Do I have a point? My point is here I am working empty house for the first time in a while. You know, once school starts, if you have kids, once sickness comes in your house, like, that's the permanent state of your house until uh, school ends. But I am making my collagen, and I'm trying to decide. I opened this one, but I don't know what I, which one I want. So I could do hazelnut or brown sugar again. Yesterday I did brown sugar, and it was really, really good. But I think I'm going to do hazelnut today just to kind of shake things up a little bit. So book update. What am I reading? Guess what? I didn't go with a romance book. I decided to just continue on with A Game of Thrones. I've never read this before. I've never watched the show. I have been extremely intrigued with the new show, House of the Dragon. I've been talking to Jessen about A Game of Thrones, like, a lot. She's been helping me, like, figure out families and things like that. Because, like, the interesting thing about coming to A Game of Thrones, as somebody who didn't watch the show this late into the game, is that while I do know, like major characters and I know like certain plot points or certain things that like pop culture references get made to I don't know like the intricate details of the family and the politics and everything about like I don't know any of that and so I I honestly have been very hesitant to read this and the most the number one reason why I've been so hesitant to read this I don't really care what this says about me this is just how I am is that I have definitely felt a lot of reservations about reading books written from an older man's point of view, especially when you hear about the things that Game of Thrones has in it, the HBO show. And I actually do want to talk about that for a minute. But first of all, so I'm not going to like, I don't, I haven't really paid attention to any critical analysis of this book, just the passing references. Like this, obviously this Game of Thrones has such a chokehold on like pop culture references that most people know the gist. You hear things or you, you know, so I know like certain things, but I don't really know any in-depth critical analysis of this book or the show. I'm not, I haven't watched the show, I don't plan to, but I do want to talk about the book. I mean, I may watch it. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. So <clears throat> my overall impressions of this, I may have said this in my first clip, just very readable, very intriguing characters that I am very interested in. I'm really curious about how this world is set up and also where it's going, you know? So overall, I would say my interest in this is pretty high. I listened to a good deal of the audio yesterday. Um, I'm very invested in the story, which I think is really interesting because it's not progressing super quickly. It's a pretty slow paced book, you know? But there is one thing that I wanted to mention, and I'm going to mention this, and I sincerely hope that if any, like, diehard George R.R. R. Martin fans specifically men are listening. I don't know why you would be, <laughs> but if you are, like, 
I just want to say this is I haven't read male authors very much at all in the last few years. I pretty much have only been reading from women authors. And if I do read from a man, it's almost always either like a thriller or it's a classic of some type. And I will say that this very famous author, very famous, very well-respected author, is doing something in here that another very famous, well-respected male author does. And I'm talking about Stephen King. And I'm not going to go into, well, it was the time period or whatever, but I'm just going to state, because this is my channel where I talk about books, that I find it very uncomfortable the way that the young Daenerys 14-year-old is being talked about in a sexual way. And I understand that, like, she's young, that's how the society, the world was working at the time, but the thing that I find unsettling and uncomfortable is the way that those two, those are the only two that I can think of right now, those two male authors made a deliberate choice to write about a young girl, not a 19, a 20 year old, an 18 year old, not even a 17 year old. They chose a young girl is like 14 and they chose that age and that body to sexualize and there's a lot of emphasis on her youthful feminine appearance and I will say that it doesn't feel gratuitous but I also feel like it's definitely unsettling. I got a phone call and I don't remember where I was left off talking to you about but I put hazelnut in here and it was really good so that was a good choice. So I think that's a, the whole issue, especially in like a medieval setting, like you know young girls of that age were married off, but I just feel like, is it, and I'm sure he has received criticism for this, I know Stephen King has, but I also feel like they're such big powerful authors that, that a lot of times people just sort of skip over that, especially when I'm in It, the book by Stephen King, I feel like that specific scene in there if you've read it or you've heard about it like you know what I'm talking about involving a very young girl like I just feel like why why is that necessary but also why do we need to why do they these men authors why do they feel the need to focus on the physical attributes that show her to be young and childlike not necessarily a young woman like 18 19 20 which even like 17 like that's a little squeaky but 14, when she still has attributes of a child, I'm like, why do we need to ha ha be explaining those in a moment where the obvious connotation is that this is sexually attractive? Like, I just, I don't understand, and I think I will never understand. I mean, I do understand, but I also am just sort of like, why, you know? Anyway, that really is not essential to the plot. I promise, I don't promise. I make no promises. So the, the promise that I have... <laughs> is that I am going to make content about books that I want to read right now. Like, I, I am not going to be reading four vlogs anymore. I mean, never say never. I'm not going to be reading for trope videos. Like, that's just not the type of content that I want to make. It, and that's because what I want to do is talk about the books that I'm reading with you. So... I don't know where this reading week is taking me, but so far it's taking me to page 260 of A Game of Thrones. And uh, that's all I have for this update. I'll check in with y'all later. Hello, friends. Look at that huge stack of books that I need to find spots for. I only have these shelves. I mean, not only. That's not true. Because I also have those shelves. <laughs> And I have shelves in there, and I, I just have books everywhere. But I just keep buying books and uh, have nowhere to put them. Anyway, hello! It is Wednesday. Welcome to the reading vlog. And I have a few things to say. Nothing, like, super groundbreaking, but I am still reading Game of Thrones. I am halfway through it. And let me tell you that... I had some serious doubt about whether I should continue filming this reading vlog that is not at all, at all, about anything trending. It's not about books that my subscribers 
typically expect from me. <laughs> like, I, I actually don't think I've ever vlogged. I have talked about some adult fantasy books on here, but I've never vlogged anything other than romance and the occasional thriller. And this book is taking me several days to get through. I feel like I've, I've realized a couple of things about myself recently, and one of them is that I don't enjoy speeding through books. I don't enjoy reading a book a day. I don't enjoy, like, trying to hurry and get through books. And I don't mean that to be negative the way that it's sounding, but what I mean is I prefer to read books that I sort of have to, right now, right now, that I have to sort of take a little bit more time with to think through. Not always, you know, because last night I was reading this and I was like, this is probably going to be all that I'm going to be able to include in this reading vlog. This is taking me so long to get through. And I don't necessarily feel like I have anything really groundbreaking, not that I usually do, but I don't really feel like I have anything really worth talking about, about this extremely famous, well-known book that hasn't been said before, you know? Um, when the Game of Thrones show came out in 2011, I was not reading adult fantasy. I was not interested in adult fantasy. I had, at that point, I was reading a lot of romance and a lot of YA. Um, I mean, that's that's what I like best, but I do enjoy reading broadly. I love fantasy and adult fantasy, and I feel like I've been sort of aching to get back to some of that and really have something to sink my teeth into. I don't know. These vlogs, I tell you what, they have bec they're becoming so rambly. So I almost scrapped this vlog because I'm like, as much as I tell myself not to, I'm always like, is anybody even going to watch that? <laughs> you know? Um... And with spicy books being so trendy right now, that's where all of the eyes are, is to people who are talking about spicy books, you know? And I love romance books, but you're never going to see a spiciest book rec video from me. Like, it's just not me. I had a TikTok comment last night. On one of my older videos, I don't really post on TikTok often because I feel like that platform just stresses me out and I don't enjoy it. But it was a book recommendation and someone had just randomly commented, like, what's the spice rating? And I replied, like, I don't rate on spice. And they're like, well, that just means how explicit it is. And I'm like, I know. <laughs> but you're never going to see a chili pepper rating for me because that's not a priority for me. If I mention that, it's for other people anyway. I get all on my pet projects here, and and I'm I'm pretty. I, I want to keep these vlogs fresh and off the cuff, and in order to do that, that means that I don't edit them a whole lot. So, my point is, I decided to carry on with this because this is what I want to read right now. It's not the type of book that I want to speed through. I want to sort of take it in slowly, and I feel like I almost have to. Not that the writing is difficult, but just that there's so many different points of view that I can feel that if I don't read this slowly, I'm going to get lost. I'm going to get lost with the characters and what's happening. And yeah, so I'm halfway through. And something that has been on my mind as I'm reading this book is why is this book so beloved and why is it regarded so highly? And I have sort of dipped my toes a little bit into reviews and seeing what people think. And I think something that I've noticed is people talk a lot about how inventive the plot is. And I don't feel like I've gotten there yet. Because, because you're going through so many different points of view, the plot is moving very, very slowly. Which means that you're relying on the characters to keep you interested. And I think that... That's something that I'm noticing for sure, is he has a really good ability in this book to have you invested in the characters without necessarily showing you a lot of internal dialogue and thought processes. 
which I think is always really interesting, and I think that that's successful for him. So I, I do feel attached to the characters, even though there are so many that I'm trying to keep track of. Another thing that I do think is interesting is that I, I do feel like the way that all of the characters are very interconnected is unique. As in, I feel like it was probably unique at the time, in 96, maybe. Although there are, I, I did see some arguments where people were like, are you kidding me? <laughs> There's nothing unique about this. But I do feel like the thing that makes this story so unique is how the characters sort of are going to all intertwine at some point. And right now, when I'm at the very beginning, you're just starting to see how that's going to happen. So I think that's interesting. Anyway, that's my reading update for today. And uh, yeah, that's all. I'm, I'm just trying to make a point of vlogging every day and giving you an update. And because this is the only thing I'm reading, that's all I have to update you on. So I'm about to go make dinner and then continue reading more of this and I will be back tomorrow with another update. Hello friends, welcome back. Welcome back to the final clip of this vlog. This vlog which took a kind of unexpected turn. <sighs> to be completely honest, when I, when I started this weekly vlog, oh by the way, it's Saturday. I skipped a few days of daily vlogging because like, I didn't really have anything I wanted to update you about because I hadn't finished the book and I was still like processing and gathering my thoughts and to be totally honest because I had such a limited knowledge of this world the song of ice and fire the, the world I didn't watch you know I mentioned earlier I haven't watched the show I haven't um, read the book I haven't really kept a close eye on the pop culture references so while I knew big moments also uh, spoilers spoilers. So if you've seen the show, you're probably fine. <laughs> like, if you've read the book, you're fine. But I'm going to talk about spoilers. I feel like that's safe to do. Uh, if you, if by chance you haven't read this book yet or watched the show like myself, you're probably not watching this anyway. But I knew, like, I'm going to tell you the gist of what I knew, okay? I knew uh, Daenerys was the mother of dragons. I knew at least one of her dragons died in the end. I knew she died in the end. I knew Jon Snow and her were related. I didn't know why or how that was significant. I knew about the Red Wedding. I didn't really know what it was. I heard about the Red Wedding. And I knew that Ned Stark died. And the reason that I knew that was because I love that actor, you know, obviously. And I was shocked that he died. I didn't know the circumstances surrounding it or anything. So I feel like in the show, like the big, those big moments those few big moments, I know those. So the pivotal moment of this entire book is Ned's death. That's really what sets everything in motion for future books to come. And I wasn't shocked when that happened. I wasn't sad when that happened. And I feel like that's partly because I knew it was coming. So by my nature of knowing a character is going to die, then I'm able to like emotionally distance myself from them as I'm reading their story so that I don't get too attached and heartbroken, you know? But I also feel like that's partly because of how he chose to ta talk about Ned's death in the way that it's, it's not graphically depicted, which was a little surprising for me. It is there. And I think that if I had gone, in, if I had gone into this, if I had read this, not knowing that, if I had been like one of the first to read or experience this and I didn't know he was going to die, I would have been shocked. I would have been shocked. I would have been gut punched. I would have been devastated. But because I did know that a lot of that impact wasn't there for me. But so I was able to sort of like critically look at that scene and how he chose to tell us that Ned was going to die. And I was kind of thinking, is he going to show us that from Eddard's point of view or is he not? And when I got to the, like, I had checked the chapters and I saw that I was on Eddard's last chapter. So I was like, there's a good chance he dies here. And he didn't. He chose to narrate that through Arya's point of view, which I think was more powerful because you could experience her emotions. But I also feel like he sort of kept you at a distance there. And I think that's something that is unique to his writing style, that 
And I find that really interesting because I'm very invested in these characters. They feel very real to me. They feel very developed and very fleshed out. And I talked about this earlier. This is the thing that I'm most interested in. And this is the thing that's keeping me reading here. But you don't get a lot of introspection from them. But you do get to see their motivations and see their experiencing all of these events in their lives. And I honestly, I feel like there's an there's an aspect to the characters that I cannot quite pin down as to why I'm so invested in these characters because they're not really I feel like he his writing style keeps you a little bit at arm's length from them even the way that he specifically in how he talked about Ned's death although the scene when Ned's head was on a pike that was that was horrifying and traumatic but even when he details like what happens to Daenerys, like, her whole story, I felt like was less emotional than I wanted it to be, except for the the moment when she sets fire to Drogo, you know? I, I, I know I haven't even talked about what this book is about. I don't really feel like I need to. I feel like this is a very self-indulgent vlog for me. It's not what I anticipated doing, but... I just wanted to read this. I wanted to experience this world. And when I had, when I was like midway through this book, not really, when I, I waited until I was close to the end. Once Ned had died, I started kind of like Googling characters and families. And I read ahead to the family, like in the back, it has the families and how they're all connected and timelines and things like that. Because I do feel like, because this was my first time experience this world, it was so complex and the characters were so, there's so many characters, there's so many different relationships. I was definitely struggling a little bit to keep track of everything, but now that I've had a chance to sort of like go through charts and look at characters and see how they're connected online and recognize events, I feel like I have a much better picture of this world and what is happening here. So those were just some things I wanted to talk about. So what, oh, something else that I didn't mention when he is describing these ter- terrible events, like, there are several times that rape is mentioned in here, and it is mentioned in a very casual, offhand way, and I feel like that's exactly what he did with Ned's death, too. And I find that interesting, because it's just sort of like the way that it is written in there, it makes it feel like this is just a part of this world, both the rapes and the deaths, and I don't know. I mean, I stand by what I said previously, and that I, I, I find it very distasteful that he made a very deliberate choice to, and I don't, I don't want to hear the argument from any, like, dude bros who find this about how it was realistic that the women, women were younger. I don't want to hear that argument because it's a deliberate choice to make that a part of your world and a part of your story. But the thing that I find most distasteful is how he chose the moments when he describes physical appearance, specifically like genitalia, female anatomy. I I find it very distasteful how he describes Daenerys specifically looking like a very young childlike girl and that is sexually attractive and I just, I don't like that. I don't feel it's necessary. I think there's a way if you want to have, I'm not going to make an argument for or against, I would obviously prefer for them not to be child brides, but if you're going to have a young heroine and have her married at 13, I just don't understand why you need to draw attention to the fact that she has a child's body. I don't like that at all. So anyway, let's talk about my rating for this book. I'm kind of struggling. I think it's probably, I think it's probably four and a half. And I don't know if I want to rate it a five or a four on Goodreads. And the main reason, there was a time when I really wanted to give this a five star, but probably for my own personal reading taste, the big one that makes this book less enjoyable for me is just the huge emphasis on the men having sex and how that was just such a big part of their personality and their desire. And And I don't care that this is a patriarchal society. I've read plenty of Arthurian fiction, Arthurian literature, medieval fiction. It comes in historical romance too. But I just find that not enjoyable for me. And I don't really... I don't know. I don't like it. And it was... It was... It was yucky. It wasn't explicit, necessarily. There were... At times it were. I think that it was more often just romanticized from the male's point of view. And I'm not saying that that shouldn't exist, because 
I think we have that same effect in romance novels that are written for women, but it was uh, a bit yucky for me. I didn't really like it. So my overall rating is probably four and a half stars. That was a detractor. I did find his writing style to be solid, readable, but dry, and a little bit... I felt like his dialogue was a little bit definitely antiquated for the time, but also felt a little bit like stilted, like it was sort of forced. It didn't feel very natural to the characters. And I think, again, is that him trying to have this medieval tone to their language? Is that what he's doing there? I don't know. So <clears throat> writing style was solid. Writing style was readable. I did find myself to be just compulsively drawn into the story. I wanted to know what was happening to the characters next. I wanted to know what was happening in the world. I really enjoyed the political aspect of this. I think it is full of political intrigue, which is super fascinating to me. I really enjoy that. I think we have a great cast of characters, especially since Ned is gone that aren't your typical fantasy heroes or heroines who are all good. These are pretty complex characters that have a lot of gray morality to them, and I'm excited to continue the series and see where that goes. But um, I loved the characters. I felt like they were really interesting. I think that this is definitely more of a medieval fantasy than just a straight up high fantasy because there's very little magic in here. The opening prologue was riveting and the end chapter was also riveting, but then it, the most of the book is just them living their lives. And so I'm really excited to see what he does with any type of magic in the future in the other books. I think it's going to be interesting. Something that I've noticed this book is praised for continuously is its originality. And I don't know that I necessarily agree with that because there's really nothing in here that feels deeply original to me. It feels like recycled tropes, but the thing that I think that makes this book so successful and powerful, one of the things, is how fully fleshed out it is, how in-depth the character's backstory, the history, these people, these this country, this world, it's just like fantastically, immaculately thought out. And I find that just to be very, very impressive and also compelling. And I think that I haven't really read a fantasy book that has that same type of history other than Tolkien. And so I think in that regard, when people talk about George R.R. R. Martin and Tolkien, they kind of keep them, you know, they're really close and similar. And in that respect, I think they definitely are. The thing that I think makes Tolkien different is the huge emphasis on good versus evil. And, I mean, that's pretty much a proven allegory in the Lord of the Rings series. It's a big focus on good will conquer all, good versus evil. And I think in here we have a lot more of dark, gritty things happening. And there is not, at this point, a focus on good versus evil at all because our good hero, Ned, died. <laughs> so I'm really interested to see what's going to come next. And, uh, like, I haven't been spoiled for future books or future events. And I'm super invested in this series and continuing it on. I did see a Goodreads review talk about this book, and she called it a male soap opera, and I think that is literally exactly what it is. It, It is so much a male soap opera, and I kind of really totally loved it. I was very sucked into this. This, like, took over my life for a week, and I loved every second of it. It was just fantastic, super enjoyable, and, I mean, like, I do have quibbles here and there. They were just the ones that I mentioned, particularly my own distaste for how he cho chooses to write women and sex with women specifically and very young girls. I just really don't like that at all. And, uh, but again, I feel like this was written in 1996. Would he make different choices today? Probably. I think he would. I mean, I would assume he would, but... Also, who knows? I don't know. Anyway, this vlog has been very rambly. It is not a romance book, but this is what I was reading, and I just I just really enjoyed it. I found myself captivated, and I'm really glad that I read this. It was a freaking tome. It was 807 pages, but guess who went and got the second book on audio and is listening to it right now? This girl. So I was going to take a break with like a romance or something, but when I, when you get to the end with Daenerys, it's just sort of like you have to know what's happening next, right? So I, I liked it. I'm impressed. Do I think that this is one of the best fantasy books that I've ever read? I mean, honestly, that's, that's a tough call because like I said, like the fantasy elements in this first book 
are very minimal. So for me to compare this to a true fantasy, I mean, it is fantasy, but to compare it to something that has more vivid, more on the page fantasy elements, I mean, that's tough. Do I think this is a really great political intrigue historical fantasy? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I would definitely categorize this as more of a political intrigue than a high fantasy at this point, at the end of book one. We'll see. I'm sure we'll have more of like the others, like the the zombie, ice zombies, which I, I'm i excited to get more of those. And uh, dragons. Very, very excited about those. So, all right. Um, thank you so much for watching if you made it this far. And if you uh, did happen to make it this far, let me know your thoughts on the books if you've read them or if you've ever wanted to read them or if you would ever read them. And uh, feel free to leave me a wolf emoji and I'll see y'all in my next video. Woo! <laughs>